Thanks very much, Terry and Jockey Daniel Moore riding in terrific form at the moment. Unfortunately, his man in the first was a late scratching, but punters hope he'll have a smile after race two. He partners the best back galloper here in Twin Perfection, who's now a $2.10 favourite, was as short as even money, opened two seventy yesterday and was back from two seventy into even money. Robert the Puss now a $4.40 second elect, shocking habit at $4.80, then it's double figures or better the rest. Stand up for me. $16 has been solid at that quote, but Twin Perfection, clearly the best back galloper, heading into race two, which is just under 10 minutes away. And remember, you can multiply the excitement with a same race multi across more races. This mounting yard is brought to you by Fuse by King G, the next generation of workwear. Good little maiden this one too, looking forward to seeing what David's made of it. Big option is the first horse we're looking at here for Mitch Friedman. He looks suited getting to 1,300 metres third up, and he never got a crack at him at Geelong last start over the 1,200 metres in what was quite a deep maiden one by Secret Samurai. So a little bit of a weaker maiden today, and, and Barrier 2 should get a nice run in transit. From the uh, very deep draw, Dashing Rebel first up going back. Yeah, first up off 122 days. Some runs last preparation getting out over to the mile were quite good. So 1,300 metres is a good kickoff point. Had two recent jump outs, settled off. Midfield and close off quite well recently at St Arnold. I'd, I'd suggest that he needs further, but not a bad kickoff point. Uh, Pont Mirian hasn't done a great deal on the synthetic tracks. It's two runs back this term. No, it was four weeks off into last start, so uh, a minor excuse fitness-wise, but was quite weak late after leading them up on the Ballarat synthetic track. Look, might be suited getting to the turf, but on current form, hard to have. OK, we go to Robert De Puss, who's been well back to win this race. He went out a big price in a very hot maiden there at Mini Valley the other night. Yeah, that was the same maiden as Twin Perfection. Twin Perfection beat Robert home this day, but Robert De Puss settled back and had the race shape against. Did actually reel off the fastest last 600 metres of the race, and, and he's one that looks suited at, at 1,300 metres and, and even further, and we've seen them be able to make ground down the outside already. Stand up for me. He's only had the one start, a late bloomer by Rebel Raider, resuming from the break. He had every chance on debut, but was 380 into a $3 favourite, so the market had some respect, and he's off 184 days, just one 850 metre Ararat jump out where he closed off OK. I'd suggest he probably needs the run. Swiss time, a roughy. Yeah, the blinkers go on, but been well beaten in, in past two runs. Dropped sharply in trip and was well beaten last start at triple figure odds. Well, it looks like the barriers, the problem for Twin Perfection, came out of a very handy race there at uh, Sale and ran well when it got back on the fence and then out of that Mooney Valley race that we just spoke about, Dave. Yeah, he was strong through the line. He was pulling away from Robert the Puss, although Robert the Puss had to make a, a long, sustained run. The, the issue today was the barrier, barrier 13, but what we've seen in, in race one was they ran inside standard time for a good track, but they did it down the middle of the track, so Daniel Moore should be able to get this galloper in the right spot and finish off. You betcha Wu had one run back from a spell against Rock DJ. Yeah, battled over the last 200 metres. Rock DJ goes around hard in the market in the last today, and... I think staying at 1,300 metres will probably be a negative. Look for him to get out over to the mile. Let's have a look at number nine. This is Ash Mosa, who's had two runs back from a spell. Start number 20 today. Third up, resumed over 1,000 metres and 1,100 metres. I think the 1,300 metres is going to be more to her liking, given the fact that some of her better performances have been in this distance range. Has, as you mentioned, Terry, had, a f had quite a few goes, so would need to be an improver. Bo DC it looks an improver in this race, uh, getting a good gait. Uh, I'd expect it to be a first four chance. Yeah, 100%. Tongue tie goes on as well after being beaten a long way last night at Cassidon, but settled at the rear in a race that completely didn't change shape the whole time. And she hit the line super. Two back at Mildura, over 1,200 metres on a good track. So I'm in a green, Terry. I think she'll be an improver today. Little tricker. Uh, she's a mare by Redwood out of a Zabil mare, so she's going to stay. First run for Paul Prushka after having one run for Alexander Ray. Yeah, had two jump outs, both over 1,000 metres. Was OK in those, but off 311 days. And the fact that she debuted at, at near on 2,000 metres, I'd suggest this is a little sharp for her. Shocking habits always shown ability. Surely it can knock a maiden off this campaign. Yeah, he was strong first up behind Silent Scream, who did win it at big odds at Terrain, but... He's, uh, her sorry, best work was the last 200 metres, and that was over 1,200 metres. So drawn out today, Dean Yendall's in outstanding form. Not only does he have an outstanding strike rate at Ararat, but he's ridden five from his last 25. So should get to the right spot and, and run on. OK, got a couple of roughies coming up now. Charlie Zoom resuming. 
Yeah, two jump outs down the track in both. A, a big price is, is warranted and, and hard to have today. Johnny McArdle formerly had Ferran's lock, also a roughie now with Matty Raymond. Off 529 days and just the one jump out, so you'd, you'd lean to the fact that she's going to need the run. OK, so the favourite's $2.10. Is that a good price or under the odds, do you reckon, Dave? I think it's probably under the odds, but it's hard to tip against because... Um, he comes through the best rating race at Mooney Valley and, and he did close off quite well. So not a betting uh, proposition for me, but hard to topple to imperfection. Shocking habit was strong late. First up can be an improver. Bod uh, Bodisha gets the tongue tied on, can improve sharply, and Robert the Puss next best. OK, Rick's going with shocking habit from twin perfection, Robert the Puss and Bodisha. Not a bad little race, this. Um, there's always been a bit of a gap between the favourite and the second and third fave. Yeah, punters have really focused on the top three in the market here, with the favourite, the best back galloper, as you can see on screen, was 270 initially. Reopened odds on this morning on race day at $1.95. And just pushed out ever so slightly from $1.95 to 210, but does remain the best back galloper. Robert the Puss has been supported on race day 650 into $4.40. Now second elect at that quote. And shocking habit, the other runner in single figure odds there at $4.50. But twin perfection clearly the best backed. And remember, you can multiply the excitement across more races with the same race multi. Paul Prushka has two horses in the race. Both of them are first up and both of them Tim at a price. TV three runners, in fact, shocking habit. Paul, probably the pick of the trio of chances you were just saying, uh, all the better for that run at Terrain? Yeah, for sure. Come on nice from there and um, haven't had to do much coming to here, so she's, she's in really good shape. Um, Dean on it, Dean knows her a bit, so uh, he's keen to jump on, which is always a good thing, and um, hopefully things go right there. She's a slightly better track here today too? Yeah, look, she seems to be fairly genuine, whether she's in it or off it. Um, so I, I don't think it'll worry her. What do you make of the chances of stand-up for me? Yeah, look, nice horse. But for me, um, you know, you see him in the mountain yard, everything's getting to him still. So a um, bit of racing there, and uh, hopefully he'll get over a bit of ground later on. Little tricker? Yeah, it's a bit the same. Um, I think a horse is sort of filling the bridle a bit too much for me. Um, couple over the short, then we'll get her over a bit of ground. Shocking habit. Clearly the pick of the trio? For sure. Good luck. Thanks. Yes, uh, my mistake there. I forgot to uh, mention the other one, being Shocking Habit, who's been very well backed. I see it's coming down in the betting now. Um, it's not going to challenge the favourite, but it's certainly going to be a hard second elect. Yeah, spot on, Terry. 460 into 390 late in betting. And as you said, now the second elect at that quote. Shocking Perfection pushed out slightly to 215 for that money coming there for Shocking Habit. And Robert the Puss, a $4.40 chance. Twin Perfection, clearly the best back galloper, but late support for the now second elect, number 14, Shocking Habit. Luke, is a maiden the hardest race to win? Uh, definitely, yeah. yeah, without any doubt. You go to the races, I imagine, thinking you're a bit of a chance and you've got elements that can go against you and then you run into a Price Kenner, a Kieran Ma horse that goes to town and wins a Group 3 that's next run? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I, I guess uh, when you see market support for one of your horses, even if you don't particularly expect it, mm -hmm. it uh, normally results in a good run. Yeah, it's funny like that now because in the old days a lot of it was punting so it was stables that would back their horses. Yeah. Now it's not. Stables are racing for prize money more so than punting, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, I guess the, the Smarties have, have done their their um, their sectionals and their, and their data and all that sort of stuff. And if you see one of yours uh, firm, uh, you, you know, normally it, uh, it means they run well. Yeah. Do you really believe that? Oh, I, I do, definitely. Because some, surely you, I've known trainers that go to the race and say, I don't think our horse can win, and it's off the map. Like I know a leading stable said to me once, we only, only go ordinary, and it was smashed in the betting yeah. and got beat easily. Yeah, well, like, like money talks, it's people's money, so it's, uh, if, if there's money for one of my horses, I normally think that uh, it means it, uh, it matches up well. Do you back your own horses still? Uh, not really. Um, certainly when I started off, that was a big part of it. But uh, Too much pressure? But yeah, these days, it's, it's, as you said, you've, it's, the prize money's good. Uh, you just want your horse out there running well. OK, they're moving in well. Here's Rick for the running of race number two. Interesting race. The second isn't a twin perfection favourite. Shocking habit second pick. And they're moving in here at the 1,300 metres for the programmed four-year-old and upwards maiden. Same distance as the first, 1,300. Big field. Ash Moser going into line. Another one being brought up riderless. Pont Mirren stands up quietly on the inside. Dashing Rebel's going to be ridden further back today from that awkward alley. Twin Perfection drawn out there with it. Here's Ferrin's lock about to come up. It's not too many more. Charlie Zoom now. Robert the Puss is still out. 
It'll be interesting to see how this big field go, all trying to get to the outside or the top half of the track in the home straight at least. It's the first is anything to go by. Dashing Rebel. Robert the Puss and Bo to see are all out of line. And here's Bo to see it coming up. Bo to see it, Robert the Push and Dashing Rebel to complete the line here for race number two on the card. Crimo won the first, John Allen for Michael Moroni. I wonder if he had the Richard Pegum. I saw him in the ownership. I wonder if he had the, uh, the Richard Pegum uh, mark on the side of him. Like the great Bondiga did. Who uh, Richard bred. Now coming up into line. Dashing Rebel. Looks like we've finally got a line here. Second race on the card. 1,300 metres. Ready, racing. Oh, Farron's lock went up when the starter said go, missed it by about four. Asmosa feeling sorry for it goes back. Shocking habit and Robert the Puss were the first to bounce. Bodice is looking to track them and Twin pe Perfection, the favourites coming across from his wide alley, trying to put himself into the picture. Pont Merrin driving up on the inside. Big option there with it and then followed by Swiss time. Next in the race then was stand up for me. Ashmosa recovering along the fence from Little Tricker. Then followed by Charlie Zoom. You betcha woo. Ferrens Lock and Dashing Rebel as promised went back and is towards the rear. Moore keeps going on Twin Perfection. Gets to the top now. From the outside gate it's not a bad effort. Led by three parts. Two shocking habit. Robert the Puss. Bo to see her next on the outside and then big option. Followed to trying to work around the outside of them there by Swiss time. They're followed by Pont Merrin over on the inside. From you, Betcha Woo, and then came Stand Up for Me, Ash Moser. Dashing Rebel hooking to the outside as they're about the corner in here. It's Twin Perfection, the front runner from Shocking Habit on the outside, who's trying hard. Robert the Puss goes back to the inside, then followed by Bo to see a Twin Perfection. Robert the Puss has cut through on its inside. Bo to see and Shocking Habit, Twin Pe Perfection is, uh, for, is bending them all off though and twin perfection too good great effort won it by one and a quarter Robert the Puss and next shocking habit third fourth in might be Ash Moser who made some good ground around Bo to see a big option Pont Merrin on the inside then followed by you betcha woo followed by stand up for me Swiss time Charlie Zoom dashing rebel little trickster a little tricker and last in after that uh, dipsy doodle at the start was Ferrens Lock well, he's the best looking horse in the race twin perfection he drew the outside gate, he was favourite, but uh, Moore took bad luck out of the equation. He used his speed and he went straight across the face of the field and just kept on going till he got to the top. He relaxed beautifully. He gave Robert the push the inside if it was good enough to get to the right part of uh, what Daniel Moore thought was the right part of the track. He had shocking habit on the canvas. She battled on quite well, but twin perfection, too good. He's a four-year-old chestnut gelding by Nakoni from Miss Twin Peaks. Makes up for the stable's bad luck in the first when they lost the dollar forty favourite uh, with uh, on Vets' advice. But uh, Philip Stokes Stable have made up for it here with Twin Perfection getting home. Daniel Moore, the winning rider for Regal Bloodstock and a stack of co-owners. Seven with a good win. Robert the Puss, number four. Jared Fry, Simon Zara. Here's a four-year-old by Bobby's Kitten. It's run second. Fourteen's run third. Shocking habit and nine. Uh, sorry, ten has run fourth. So seven, four, fourteen and ten, says Judge Jim. Seven, four, fourteen. Shocking habit third. Uh, Dean Yendel and Paul Pushka. It's run third. And ten, Bo to see her. Has finished back in fourth placing. So seven, four, fourteen and ten. Let's get down to Tim. He's talking with Michael Harrison, the uh, foreman for Stokes today. Well, Michael, it was a, a pretty nice ride from Buck. It's very aggressive and it paid off a great win. Yeah, it drew a sticky gate, but um, Daniel was very confident to come in today, so backed him and he's, it's paid off. Jockey was confident. Was the stable confident too? Yeah, the horse has been travelling great. Um, he's been in really good order since, we, since uh, he's come into the stable this prep. Uh, he's come from Avika Park. They did a great job with him pre-training him and looking after him early days. And... Um, 
yeah, from there we've, we've really just kicked goals. They probably found this a lot easier than last time. Yeah, well, the race at the Valley it wasn't um, all that bad. We are pretty happy with him, the way he performed there. But um, we thought coming out to 1,300 and just being outside horses, being able to control the pace, I thought was pretty, pretty good for him today. Bit of a dramatic start to your day, Michael, with the odds on pop in the first getting scratched. Can you just tell us uh, a little bit about what happened there? Um, yeah, so we just arrived a bit, a bit later, later than what we expected with a bit of the traffic coming um, up here, but um, just brought her into the stores, unfortunately. She just sort of got a bit frazzled and hit her head um, and the vets just thought it was uh, better to be safe than sorry and pull her off from the race. Um, but the horse, the horse will be fine. Um, we'll get her home and, yeah, look after her. Some tonic getting win in race two then? Yeah, it makes it, makes it a little bit, the drive home a little bit better. But um, look, Raph for the team at Regal Bloodstock, they've been very patient, these owners, with this horse. And um, hopefully it's onwards and upwards from here. Well done. Thank you. So Michael Harrison representing Philip Stokes and touched on a great ride from Daniel Buckets Moore. Drew the wide Garrick, went straight to the top and the rest was pretty much history. And Buckets is going to just take the saddle off and come over and have a quick chat to us. Here he comes now. Buckets, that was a, uh, on paper, it probably looked a bit of a tricky affair to start with, but uh, straight to the top and it was all over. Yeah, the, the lead was on offer at a cheap rate, so we bounced well and oh, I didn't really sort of go in with any cut clear cup to land, obviously, from the awkward alley, but um, yeah, no, it worked out well. Bit of tonic after the uh, scratching of the fave in the first? Yeah, really disappointing. It's it's really quite a shame. It's That race is worth sort of off 60000 for horses that are double vobus, so... Really, really disappointing for the connections. Hope she's okay. Twin perfections come on since the run at the Valley? Definitely. Um, it probably should have finished a lot closer there. We got cluttered up and uh, he's still a little new and he just didn't like horses around him there. But um, today we were able to obviously dictate terms and I was able to come out to the middle of the track, which seems to be the better part. And he was, uh, you know, it's a foreign role for him, for him in front, but um, he'll take a bit out of today. A couple of races down, is the fence a no-go zone? It is for me. I'm going to get on the road and go on home. So, <laughs> no, look, it, it apparently... Local boys are saying that um, there were some trials here and maybe towards the middle it was opened up and dried out a little bit more. So it, it looks that way at the moment, but it may even up as the day goes on. Well, hopefully that puts to bed some of the disappointment. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. What up? In the Koenig, just a great sign of producers. Another winner, late bloomer, costing $75,000 at the English sales here in Melbourne. And once it went to the front, it was always going to take a lot of beating, Dave. Yeah, Buckets Moore rode him like the best horse and he was coming through the highest rating race. And I, I do love to see when... He said it wasn't plan A, but when the lead was up for grabs cheaply, he wasn't going to knock it back. And even after what we saw in race one, where they wanted to angle towards the outside, he was able to lead and, and dictate. They ran 0.2 seconds slower than race one. And, and both times today really indicated it's bang between a good four and, and a soft five. But the best horse went to the front. You can see that Daniel Moore wants to angle off the fence. Robert the Puss jumped quite well for Jared Fry. He was able to settle on the leader's back and come up... Um, make his run much closer towards the fence but Daniel Moore led angled off and the first four in run were the, were the first four across the line so it was, a, it was a, a race that didn't change much in terms of complexion during the weight the race and, and Daniel Moore was able to dictate from the front the rest was history and I'm sure the Stokes stable are going to be wrapped after what what happened in, in race one. They travel a horse up, but at least they go home with, with some prize money today. Absolutely, they'd be gutted by that because mm. that horse probably wins the first pretty easily from what we've seen of that race with a bit more turn of foot than the uh, the winner and the prize money was uh, was huge for that event. Anyway, we're going to go to a break. We've got Tom Dabernick. He's got the favourite short odds saddling up in the next race on the program. Luke Oliver back in the studio with us in a moment. Question. Have you seen this? For all races at 